Japan just landed a spacecraft on an asteroid, and the photos that they sent back are really nuts. This is on Science Alert by Morgan McFall Johnson, Business Insider. The life of an asteroid is lonely, they say, and the rocks spent eons drifting through the cold vacuum of space. But on Wednesday, the asteroid Ryugu welcomed a special visitor. Japan's Hayabusa 2 probe successfully landed on the asteroid's surface at 29.06 ET, that's 1.06 UTC time on Thursday. The Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency, JAXA for short, launched Hayabusa 2 into space December 2014. Its mission was to explore and collect samples from Yugu, a primitive asteroid half a mile in diameter that orbits the Sun at a distance up to 131 miles, that's 211 million kilometers. The probe reached its destination in June 2018, then got to work making observations, measuring the asteroid's gravity, and rehearsing to touch down. It blasted the asteroid with a copper plate and a box of explosives in April in order to loosen rocks and expose material under the surface, then successfully landed on Ryugu last night to gather up the rock and soil debris. The spacecraft captured the images below as it left the asteroid surface. First photo taken at 10.06.32 JST on board time, and you can see the, gravi the gravel flying upwards Second shot was at 10.08.53, about two minutes later, where the darker region near the center is due to touch down, JAXA tweeted. Ancient rock samples. Asteroids are made of rock and metal, and they take all kinds of quirky shapes, ranging in size from pebbles to about 600 mile megaliths. Most of them hang out in the asteroid belt between Mars and Jupiter, though Ryugu's orbit sometimes takes it between Mars and Earth. Some asteroids date back to the dawn of our solar system four and a half billion years ago, when materials left over from the formation of planets coalesced into these chunks of rock. In that sense, asteroids can serve as time capsules. What scientists find in those primitive rocks could tell us a lot about the solar system's history. Ryugu is a C-type asteroid, which means it's rich with organic carbon molecules, water, and possibly amino acids. Amino acids form the building blocks for protein and were essential to the evolution of life on Earth. Some theories posit that an asteroid first brought amino acids here to Earth, gifting our planet with seeds of life, though it's still debated. About three-quarters of our solar system's asteroids are C-type, Hayabusa 2 aims to be the first mission to bring samples from such an asteroid back to Earth. The probe initially landed on Ryugu in February and collected shallow samples from just below the surface, but mission managers decided to gather some deeper rock samples as well, since that material has not been exposed to harsh weathering from space. To accomplish that, the probe had to lift back off the asteroid then blast a 10-meter crater into the surface in order to access the rock beneath. So in April, Hayabusa 2 released and detonated a box of explosives in space that shot a copper plate into the asteroid. Wednesday's landing then made a splash in all that freed up material from the explosion. Quote, these images were taken before and after touchdown by small monitor camera CAMH, the first is four seconds before touchdown, the second is at touchdown itself, and the third is four seconds after touchdown. In the third image, you can see the amount of rock that rise. After it touched down, I boosted to and collected a new set of samples and left Ryugu's surface. At the end of this year, it will begin the 5.5 million mile, that's 9 million kilometer journey, back to Earth. So far, everything is on schedule. NASA is on a similar mission. NASA is also studying a far-off asteroid. The agency's Osiris Rex mission reached a much smaller C-type asteroid, Bennu. Bennu actually is a, like almost a small planet, we would say. 
Now, Aga, in the, they did this, they reached it in August 2018, but the probe did not land on Venom's surface. Instead, it's been orbit orbiting at a record-breaking close distance. The plan is for a Sirius Rex to reach Bennu's surface July of next year, 2020, but the spacecraft will only make contact for about five seconds. During that quick instant, it will blow nitrogen gas to stir up the dust and pebbles and collect the samples. If all goes according to plan, it will return that material to Earth in 2023. The asteroid's surface has turned out to be rougher than expected, however, and debris flying off the space rock can pose a threat to the orbiting spacecraft, so NASA is still choosing its sampling site. But Bennu has already made a significant find. In December, before it entered orbit around Bennu, the probe discovered that the asteroid harbored ingredients for water, that is, oxygen and hydrogen atoms, bounded together, Though Bennu is too small to host liquid water, it's possible that water could have once existed on its parent asteroid, which Bennu broke away from between 700 million and 2 billion years ago. Though NASA's Asteroid Explorer mission will collect a larger quantity of sample material than Japan's, the JAXA team of Japan hopes that comparing the samples from two different sites on the same asteroid will yield novel information about how long-term space exposure changes asteroids over time. Both Bennu and Ryugu could also teach scientists a lot about the history of the solar system and potentially, if they, can, if they contain organic materials, about the origins of life on Earth. The article was originally published by Business Insider and it's on Science Alert. This is the area of the image that shows where the lander was. You can see the smudged areas on the left and on the right. As this was after takeoff. You can see where the landing pads were. It doesn't seem to be too dense of dust. The dust seems to be very, very little, considering that this was from the explosion. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece. In Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.